A very good day to you all. You may remember me from such videos as HP Chromebook 14 Motherboard Repair Part 1. Now, at the time, I promised a uh, Part 2 on this. However, I really didn't make much progress on the repair of this motherboard. So, I decided not to make a video at the time. Now, because I've no content this week, because I'm struggling for content, as you guys know, um, I'm going to revisit this and there's gonna be just one thing about this I'm not gonna try and inherit anything from the previous video I'm gonna approach this as if it was the first time I ever looked at this motherboard so I've marginally better skills than I had back then so hopefully you can see that but I'm gonna approach this as a brand new repair and I'm gonna bring you along for the spin so I hope you all enjoy this video keep watching I've scanned the motherboard on my flatbed scanner and this is what it looks like right here. So just two things with this before we proceed with troubleshooting. Number one, I don't have a power adapter with this so I need to know where to inject power with my DC power supply. And secondly, we do not have a schematic for this so I am going to have to wing it on this one. But I'm going to give it a shot anyway. So let's proceed. Now in most of these laptops we've looked at, it's been easy to identify where the power is. We just find the circular jack, the DC in jack, and you can then find you know, a fuse, the input MOSFETs, and you can know where to inject from there. However, there's no DC in jack specifically on this, it's charged through the USB port. So I, just, I don't want to go you know, trying to inject power at the USB ports in case I you know put it on the data lines or something like that so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to try and locate the battery management IC and see if we can find out where to inject from there so if we look at this board we can see there's a Nuvaton chip here which I presume is a startup SanDisk makes storage devices so this is probably the hard drive there's two BIOS chips here they didn't really come out that well on the scan but it's Winbond and Winbond uh, I think one is a BIOS and the other is the EC BIOS uh, these four ICs here, you can probably have a guess that they are the memory chips. I think they're one gig each. This is our processor. But when I came down here, I found this IC. Now, you cannot see it that clearly in my scan, but it's BD9995. And when I check that out, that is a one to four cell lithium ion battery manager for application processors. All right. Now again, I don't have a full schematic for this HP Chromebook, but there might be enough in the sample circuit that comes with these to give me an indication. So where is the sample circuit? Here it is. Okay. So here's all the pins on it. It's a 20 pin, sorry, 40 pin IC. But if I can find a VCC pin, I can find where the power comes in. Okay, so if you take it that this would be our USB charging port, there's a detection here. Of VCC which is the power in so I'm gonna mark on that IC the important pins because we have a full pin out as well and then I'm gonna find where this is and I'm gonna try and inject my own voltage at this point here so on the left we have the pinouts for our 40 pin BD9995 battery management IC and on the right we have that same chip as it looks on our scanned image of the motherboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in the important pins on the actual picture of the motherboard. So let me just do that now. Now as you can see that VCC pin that we were talking about earlier that identifies where the power comes in is right down here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this back up and see where in the circuit this brings us. And that's where I'm going to try and inject 15 volts with my DC power supply. I've brought up the sample circuit from the data sheet again because this will help us follow along. So here's our VCC pin. We can see the path comes back up to where the power comes in from our USB. So if I can find where this goes to up here, I can find a spot where I can inject my own DC power in place of an adapter. So let's just see if we can follow that path. So here's our VCC pin right here. So if I look in on that, you can see that this path follows... It's coming out here, out here, along to the side here. Let's scroll down a small bit comes down this path here 
and yes onto this pair of MOSFETs right here so I think where I have marked out here is essentially this point and we know that we can inject voltage here in place of a charger you can see that we have two MOSFETs so these are Q3 and Q4 people might be querying and saying well hang on a second this is only a sample circuit you know this is the actual motherboard of the HP Chromebook but what you will find is with these power management battery management ICs is that the sample circuit is usually pretty close to what is actually on the motherboard itself so I'm going to use this as a guide to what's going on here and I'm going to identify this as the spot where I inject my 15 volts so let's do that I've drawn in a red line to mark the path from our VCC back up to our MOSFETs just to make sure I don't make any mistakes so what I've done as well is I have injected 15 volts in here let me just show you how I've done this so if we zoom back out you will see I found a ground over here and I have injected 15 volts at the easiest point to do it which is at this capacitor here so it's essentially here where I'm injecting so I'm injecting 15 volts at this point here and I'm going to see how the circuit reacts and see if I can get it to power on or see exactly what is and isn't working. I've written in 15 volts here just to show that we're injecting 15 volts onto the motherboard. And the first components in the path, the Q3 and Q4, are these two MOSFETs right here. So these are both Aon 7410, Aon 7410. So let's just take a quick look at this. We've been through these before. This is an N channel 30 volt MOSFET. Uh, same configuration as you will usually see on the inputs to these. You have four drain pins that are all connected together on one side. You have three source pins that are connected together on the other side. And then a gate pin which controls whether the voltage is allowed from source to drain or drain to source. So let's just get a look at these on the board then. Okay, so I'm going to mark in the pinouts for both of these. So we know we have 15 volts here, so we need to see if the gate pin is high and allowing the 15 volts from drain to source. So we're injecting 15 volts onto the motherboard right now, and I want to take some measurements to see where exactly it's going. So this is what we're going to use. Uh, this is our digital multimeter in volts DC and 20 volt range. And we're going to connect our black probe to ground down here. And we're going to take measurements with our red probe. So the first measurement that I take is just I place my red probe to the drain pins here and just confirm that we have 15 volts at this point. So this MOSFET here, the gate controls the flow of voltage from drain to source on this. So the gate pin should be high in order for this end channel MOSFET to be switched on. So when I measure the gate pin of this first MOSFET, I find there's 20 volts here. That's a high gate signal and that means that our 15 volts should be passing through from drain to source. So I measure my source pin here and I find that there is 15 volts. So this MOSFET is switched on and it's allowing our 15 volts to this point here. Now as you can see from the schematic here, the two of these Q3 and Q4, which again correspond to these two here, are controlled by the same AC gate 2 pin. So I would be presuming that if our gate here is 20 volts then the gate of the second MOSFET is also the same so I measure my gate pin of the second MOSFET and I find that it's 20 volts also so this should also be turned on and my 15 volts should be making it from our source pins here to our drain pins right over this side so I measure right here and I find that there is 15 volts at this point also so looking back to our schematic um, what our sample schematic I'm injecting 15 volts here which is being read by our battery management IC and it's permitting that 15 volts through to this point here which is here so I'm reading from that that it's accepting my 15 volts as you know an acceptable DC power supply because otherwise I would expect this to pull you know if it was over voltage or under voltage or if it had any problem with what I'm with what I'm injecting I would expect it to pull the gate pin for these and I would have 15 volts here and nothing here however what I'm seeing here is it's permitting the 15 volts true here to this point so that point here corresponds to this point on the schematic so we're going to follow it along and if we follow that along and follow it along at the same time on our actual motherboard we're coming along this path right here 
and as you can see we have R010 so that corresponds to our R1 and the only thing we really need to check for our current sense resistor you can see that's a current sense resistor because it's giving a reading before the current sense resistor ACP and a reading after the current sense resistor ACN and from that it's able to detect how much current is entering the circuit and then shut it down if there's too much current being pulled in so when I measure the other side of this current sense resistor I measure 15 volts at this point also so that tells me that uh, it's happy enough with the current that's coming into the motherboard because otherwise it would have just shut down the first two MOSFETs I've just marked on my picture here where 15 volts is coming through the current sense resistor and it finds its way here okay that corresponds to this point on the schematic right here so you may have seen before on other laptops other laptops that we've done on the channel that after the current sense resistor this is usually considered our main power rail and this goes off to our secondary circuits however on this smaller laptop that 15 volts is not going anywhere else seemingly it's coming down to a set of MOSFETs here which I am identifying as this pair of MOSFETs so this one corresponding to this one here and this one corresponding to our lower MOSFET and then this being L1 the inductor in the middle so I think what may be happening is that the 15 volt has been regulated down to a lower voltage so when I measure here still measuring in DC volts in the 20 volt range with my black probe to ground I measure here and I'm measuring 7.66 volts at this point I've marked in my 7.66 volts at this point here and I've confirmed on the other side of that inductor that we also have 7.66 volts as well so what appears to be happening here is that we have 15 volts at this point which is fed into this high side low side MOSFET configuration and it's regulating that down to 7.66 volts seems like an unusual value to me but I'm gonna keep troubleshooting anyway and see where we end up we're nearly at the end of this uh, battery management IC circuit so we're at this point and we have 7.66 volts right here and next components in line are this MOSFET and this MOSFET here those two MOSFETs appear to correspond with these two MOSFETs here it's slightly unusual because it's saying LG as in lower gate HG as in higher gate but it doesn't look like the regular high side low side configuration which is you know high side low side and inductor in between and then the voltage comes out here so I'm not sure what exactly this combination of MOSFETs is doing I don't really care for the moment all I care is that at this point here we have a voltage that is presented to our system so I'm presuming this is our main power rail here that will go off to all of the other ICs and power all of those so I just want to confirm that we have a voltage here and that it's some way within whatever the acceptable range should be how do I identify this point on our actual motherboard well we have a current sense resistor here and that corresponds to this current sense resistor here that current sense resistor is for identifying uh, or for allowing the battery management IC to calculate what the current going to the battery is but for our purposes here I know that the near side of that is along the same path as the voltage that's going to the system so when I measure here I find that there's 8.8 .8 volts at this point okay so where does that leave us then well we've got 8.8 .8 volts coming out of our battery management IC circuit and being presented to the system I'm not hundred percent sure if that is correct I know some of the max regulate the voltage down to around 8 volts but I haven't seen that on uh, any of the you know Windows based devices that being said I don't deal with many of these but that's where we are with it we've 8.8 .8 volts that's been presented to the system and the next step is to check and see if that's pre present at the, you know the secondary circuits and if the secondary circuits are working okay guys I'm gonna leave it at that for this week uh, before everybody including me falls asleep because that was pretty painstaking as I'm sure you'll agree but that is where we are with it uh, I've traced the voltage I've injected 15 volts to start with sorry I've traced that to our battery management circuit and we're being presented with 8.8 .8 volts which is being delivered to the system next step is to try and find out if that 8.8 .8 volts is the correct voltage that should be there I'm not sure how I'm gonna find that out um, I may be able to find out by checking all of the secondary circuits and seeing if they are working.
But there's going to be a part three of this. I'm not sure if it's going to be next week, but I will work away on this in the background. Thanks for all the comments as usual. Uh, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just please post them below. Thank you.